you're going to be who you are as a result of those things. You're allowed to identify your trauma. You're allowed to, this is something that's so become so important to me as of late. I'm trying to justify the living and identifying in the trauma, which is very healthy with self care and such, but going too far to the point where we're, we we're spinning out of control. I clearly have an amount of trauma from the past. Mm -hmm. I have identified said trauma. I have worked to overcome said trauma. I will not wallow in it. Yeah. And where we are seeing a lot of self-entitled, I mean, that's not the word. It's not self-entitled. No. We are seeing people who, uh, it has become the norm and or the promoted action to wallow in your, in your pain, to wallow in your, the, the part that hurt, to wa whatever. I, I can't, I'm running Let's out of words for it. Let's be honest. It's excuses. It, it, it's it's excuses. just, I can't do it because. Yeah. You're, 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 you're translating it wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying earlier, like to hear. Here is where you make the decision to make action. Yep. Or you decide to wallow in it and you let, words hurt you know <laughs> this is so dumb but i was driving down the road this morning listening to a book and someone said from when we were kids sticks and stones may break my bones and words will never hurt me okay so now i was like well that's traumatic in my head i thought that's traumatic and you're like what do you mean if you were to say that to somebody now oh words don't hurt you're so yes they do they do hurt they do hurt me if you had, you know what I mean? The difference between yeah. now and then. Okay, I get it. Yes, okay, words words can hurt. Okay, we've identified that, but how are we going to move forward? And where we are right now is we are spinning in it. We are letting it overcome us. We are letting it take us down. We are letting it define who we are. We're not learning from the trauma. We're not learning and correcting the behavior. We're wallowing in the trauma now. You know, newsflash, six bottles of champagne is not self-care. And you in a bathtub with six bottles, of, two bottles of champagne talking about the pain that your husband put you through, that's not solving anything. It's not solving anything. So you have the choice. You have, congratulations, you have properly identified your trauma. Yeah. Now what are you going to do with it? Yeah. Because the part where I think people are leaving, people are leaving, good job, that's your trauma. Man, that must have really sucked. Bye. Yeah, it is my trauma. And I, you know what? I've been through a lot. He's still not owed anything. Yeah. And that's something that I think that is probably not, not, not easily explainable on you know, Instagram or Facebook or wherever the heck we're talking about all this motivational stuff where people are probably rolling their eyes when you see my posts. I'm not asking for anything from you. No. I haven't asked anything from you. And I haven't asked anybody from all those people I named earlier. I've asked nobody from... It's me. Yeah. I'm not asking for anything from anyone. You don't even really have to believe me if you don't want to. But I know that what I'm doing so far, two plus two is equal to four, so I'm going to keep adding two together. Yep. So it's been working so far, but we really are just crybabies. And I'm not saying that to discount what anybody's gone through because I myself, you've now learned, have gone through a whole lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, there was a period in time when crying myself to sleep was the majority of my nights. Mm -hmm. Where would I be if I stayed there? Yeah. I would smell like cat urine. Yeah. It's what? Today is, a, today is a Monday, and it's a holiday, which means at 11, 12, we would have opened the restaurant 12 minutes ago. And because it's a holiday, I would have been understaffed because nobody works on holidays. But because it's a holiday, we would have quadrupled the amount of business today. It, I would just be starting out of the line cooking. And by the end of the hours today, I would be destroyed. And I would still be there today if I was wallowing in self-pity for everything I'd gone through. Yeah. I don't like any of the things I've ever experienced, Jeff. Yeah. I don't like a dang one of them. But I can solemnly swear I wouldn't change a damn one of them to feel the way that I feel today. Agree. Agree. I just wouldn't. Yep. So the lesson in that is you have to trust the process. You have to trust your knowledge. You have to get educated. You have to find out what you really want and see what it is so you can direct yourself in that opinion. But you do not wallow in this sorrow. You learn from the sorrow. In fact... If you wallow in the sorrow, you're exactly doing it wrong. You're not using it for what it was supposed to be used for. Yep. Well, and you also have to, you have to want it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a baseline. You can say you want it. All you want. But if you don't really want it, there's only one person who can do it. 
and it's that person in the mirror. Do you mirror. find yourself ever looking at people's posts because you know them well enough at this point? You're like, I want it. And you're like, mm, you got a few other choices to make before you actually want it. I mean, saying you want it is so much different than doing it. You yeah, know, it's true. Well, again, you know, when you're looking at social media, you're looking at somebody's, you know, highlight reel. You're highlight looking at their sports center top 10, right? I think there's some things you should challenge yourself to do no matter who you are. I think you should so, and it's a really good way to segue into this uncomfortability thing. Mm -hmm. You're going to find that these rewards and these things that you enjoy and the, and the successes in life are going to come from these, fr come from these wins. So how do you do, how do you get wins? You make challenges. How do you make challenges? You make everything a game. Sorry. Cold showers. We love gamification. Yeah. Cold showers. Yep. I win every day. I take yep. it. You couldn't do it. I can do it. Win. Yep. I didn't call you and tell you you couldn't do it. I know you nope. can. I'm saying somebody else. I didn't call Bob and go, hey, Bob. I know a lot of Bobs, by the way. None of the Bobs are taking cold showers. Hey, Bob, I took cold shower today. You didn't. That's not how it works. <laughs> you yeah. know, in my head, I did it. I took the cold shower today. You know, and as a result of it, I got the benefits of all the things that go along with it because whether you want to admit it or not, cold showers are really good for you. <laughs> yeah, so. Sure. Um, we could probably talk for a whole for hours. 30 minutes at least <laughs> because the, it's a, it's a baseline. It's a, yeah. you have to find the, if you want to explain the most complex things, finding something so stinking simple, like a cold shower is easy to do it. Why? Cause it hurts. Well, but you put yourself out of your comfort zone. You're overcoming something that's hard. You're having a win. You're moving forward. Your motive, like that, 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 all these things that come out of this one little thing instead of. You know, one of the things I always get, always, always get when I say I'm taking cold showers is from the female population. How am I going to shave my legs? You're probably going to have to go in and shave your legs at a different time. Okay? Sorry, you were absolutely correct. Cold water is not conducive to shaving legs. You win on that one. The rest I win. Okay? <laughs> so shave your, shave your legs later. Put your legs in there and turn the warm water on. <laughs> I get it, 100%. But I think that that, uh, one of the biggest frustrations I have, and that's probably with it, it with everything nowadays and everybody that wants to accomplish something is not you it, it is honesty yeah. and i'm not asking even for you to be honest to me or you or Cade or whoever i'm asking you to be honest with yourself at the very least even if it's not what you want to hear be honest to yourself look yep. yourself straight in the eye didn't take a cold shower today had four drinks smoked half past cigarettes today was not a win yeah at least be honest with yourself because right now one of the Side problems to everything is we're lying to ourselves. We're looking at our social media feeds and listening to what we're writing. We are actually lying and getting away with it and acting like we didn't know we were lying to ourselves. I mean, if you're posting that you did such and such and such and such, but you didn't do such and such and such and you let it out there, you are willingly engaging in absolute lies to make yourself look better, which is completely artificial and you're, you're not doing yourself or anybody else any favors. Yeah. Yep. 75 hard. Oh yeah, yeah. buddy. Oh my goodness. You know, it's so, quintessential. Yeah. The, um, but 75 hard benefits and the, the, the program that it is, and it's not a challenge, you know, you know, listen to Andy Frisella and all that, you it's know, not a challenge. I feel like I need to say it's that to everybody. It's not a challenge. It's not a challenge. Not a challenge. <laughs> no, Andy. It's a program. It's a program. <laughs> but and it's it, a freaking program. And, and it's tough. And it's meant to be tough. And the and microcosm of the, uh, the, what you and I discussed earlier, the microcosm yep. of the how people adapt it to themselves is a perfect example of what the larger thing is in America. And mm -hmm. you, uh, yeah. you can say it. It's just so, you know, it's, it's with the program, if you do it, and, and Andy will tell you, you know, there's, there's plenty of people who do it. And there's plenty of people that post on social media that they did 75 hard. And he said, if you do it, and if you do it right, you know you did it. Mm -hmm. And you can tell if somebody actually did it or if they are pretending Absolutely. that they did it or they think they did it. Um, you know, it's, it, it's meant Let's to be Let's break tough. it down real quick. Yeah. Okay. So 75 yeah. hard number one is 75 day challenge. Excuse me. 75 day program. <laughs> See, I did it too. Yep. 75 day program where you work out twice a day, 45 minutes a day, one inside, one outside. You drink a gallon of water a day. You read for 10 minutes a day or 10 pages. 10 pages 10 of pages a physical a nonfiction book. Nonfiction. Yep. Um, book. You have to do something, with, change something with your diet. Yep. You have to, you have to pick something dieting, whether, yep. whatever, whatever's comfortable for you, and you have or to take a picture. Yeah, or uncomfortable. <laughs> take a picture every day. 
And that's it. Right? Oh, no. No alcohol for 75 yeah, sorry, days. That's yeah. for me. <laughs> Which is so funny because that's the hardest part for everybody yeah. else. But because I don't drink, who gives a shit? Yeah. You know, it's like that's it's really funny that every I forget about the no drinking part yeah. because I don't drink. And everybody's like, oh, my God, no drinking for 75 days. Yeah, that's where we lose a lot of people. Uh, exactly. Every time. <laughs> it's the alcohol. It's the yeah. going out and socializing. And, you know, we come back to the alcohol. The hardest part of 75 hard, you would think, is two workouts, 45 minutes a piece. Now, yeah. don't get me wrong. The outdoor workout is a hard thing to get. But it's the alcohol. Everybody cr cracks on the alcohol. If yeah. that doesn't tell you there's a problem, I don't know what does. That is one of those things, Jeffrey, that using that microcosm to identify a problem. Mm -hmm. The one problem everybody has with 75 hard, which is one of the hardest things you can do, is the alcohol. <laughs> That's the biggest problem people have. Not the working out not for an hour and a half a day. No, not <laughs> drinking so much water. You can't even, like, you pee <laughs> every yeah. 16 and a half minutes on, on 75 hard. Yeah, but anyway, so 75 hard is this. Here's, you go. <laughs> Here's what the first thing people do. And you're going to guess this. Mm. America Today, the first thing people do is rename it and change it. How many people have you seen do yeah. 75 hard light? Yeah. 75 medium. modified. Have yeah. 75 hard modified. Hey, and, and don't get me, don't get us wrong. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Did like something. doing something for 75 days, changing it Huge. up, mixing it up, doing something cool. Just don't call it 75, 75 hard. hard. <laughs> I, I applaud your discipline. Absolutely. I applaud you accomplishing anything for 75 days. Whether Fantastic. It be if I remembered every day to snap my fingers for 75 days straight, yep. I would leave 75 days going, wow, I remember to snap my fingers for 75 days. That's quite an accomplishment. <laughs> but the f if you listen to episode 14 of the, uh, you know, of, of the podcast from Andy Priscilla, he will tell you in the first three minutes, you do not modify 75. It's like Fight Club. Yep. What's the first rule of Fight Club? You don't talk about Fight Club. The first rule of 75 Hard is... You don't modify 75 hard. It, and the thing is, it, and that said, it's modifiable for anyone, which yeah. is fantastic. You make it your program. But you make it hard. Yes. It, it, and that's, it's 75 hard. It's not 75 easy. It's not 75 moderate. What's it's not your hard? Whatever. They allow exactly. you to make your hard. For yeah. very, let's, let's use two perfectly great examples. Some people's 75 hard is yoga for 45 minutes and a walk for 45 minutes. Yep. Some people 75 hard is 25 miles in the morning and 30 miles at night. Yeah. Some it's two hours in the gym and two hours, even though you have to do 45 and two hours outside. Yeah. But again, there were days during 75 hard that I did meditation because I was so sore from the days before that I would literally like get into a physical, you know, do yoga and meditation as my 45 minutes outside walking. There were some How many walks. times did we do coaching when I was I'd be like, hey, I'm going to do my, I did my coaching sessions on Friday morning. Sometimes I would do them walking because I'd push myself so hard by Friday that I was like, I really can't go for another yeah. run today. Or by So yeah. it's modifiable just within the parameters of the program. Yeah. And that, I told you earlier, um, one of my favorite moments of 75 hard for anyone um, was somebody that I know that, um, and they did it undercover. They didn't promote this to anybody yeah. i'm probably one of the only people besides their family that know that they did 75 hard and um on a day that i was expecting them to be on number 23 day number 23 they said that they were on day number seven again and quite honestly i almost cried and it was just so beautiful because that over. Is that is the resolve that is proving that you can do this that is 75 hard that is admitting that you missed and, and they missed over something ridiculously Dick, ridiculous. stupid. At, like they forgot to take a picture and, or I think it was, they forgot to take a picture or they forgot to drink a gallon of water and they woke up the next morning and they knew they had a choice. And any Frisilla gives you that choice on the app. You know, you can either say, I really did it. I did do it. I they did say, everything. They ask you again. The or <laughs> did you really is what it says. Yeah. Or I'm going to start over. And this person was 100% honest with himself. And I'm, I'm so proud of them um, that they said, yeah, I, I didn't do it. I did the two workouts. I did. I drank, you know, I did all the other things, but I forgot to do this one thing and I'm starting over and that person has kids and, and that person's kids got to experience that, that this, their, their parent, I don't, I almost, you know, messed up and said Didn't a little they? bit about who they were, <laughs> uh, but their parent was honest with themselves and, and, and they said that they were doing 75 hard and they meant it and, and they missed it and they started over again and 
you know, God bless them. But they doing it means it, starting, which over was again. awesome. Yeah. But doing it means starting over. Absolutely. Again. In fact, if you start over again, you're still doing it. Yeah. If you continued, you aren't doing it. Yep. So you have it is, it is little things like that to remember. If you messed up and didn't start over, you are no longer doing 75 yeah. hard. Yep. If you messed up and started over, you are still perfectly doing 75 Absolutely. hard. Absolutely. You didn't fail. To the rules. You were yeah. just doing it the right way. Yep. You were literally following in with it. You were starting over. He didn't say 75 hard was supposed to take 75 days. No. Tell me, find me the literature that says 75 hard takes 75 days. Yep. Nowhere in there does it say you're a failure if it takes you more than 75 days. You're a failure if you don't start over. If you don't, that's when you failed it. You're yep. actually succeeding if you hit day 60 and start over again because you messed up. Absolutely. But getting that mentality is is something you need to teach yourself and learn. Yeah. You think of it the opposite way. You felt like you failed it, so you are continuing on the day that you're not supposed to, when in actuality you're failing because you're continuing on the day that you're not supposed to. If you were really doing 75 hard, you would start over again. Yeah. But that little break is the definition that people need to learn. Yep. That, that portion... They have it the opposite way, but that is so relatable to the rest of life. You know, Absolutely. that yeah. yep. adjust, recorrect, figure out what you did wrong and move forward Absolutely. instead of continuing to do what you were doing and expecting the same results. Remember how many times, how, how cliche is the definition of insanity? Yeah. We've True. heard it a thousand times. Now it's come to the point where it's been said so many times that people say it Oh, yeah, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Say it slower. Because <laughs> it is actually insanity. Yeah. Yep. Actually insanity. Yep. So, how do you feel about your story? <sighs> I think... So if you'd asked me that 10 years ago or 15 <laughs> years ago, I would not be okay. Yeah. Yeah. But now I'm really stoked about it, man. Yeah. And like, so people have told me for a while, you need to tell your story. It'll help people. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple examples. Number one, Facebook, Instagram, social media. Again, I say publicly in the fourth time, social media is the devil, but <laughs> it can't be good. <laughs> I can't get rid of it for one reason. I'm helping at least 30 people. Mm -hmm. And I'm not helping 1,200 people, just so you know. I have 1,233 friends as of this morning. Friends. <laughs> 1,200 of them probably are indifferent, don't listen much, probably blocked me or, or unfollowed me at some point. But what I really care about is the 33. Yeah. Last week, someone in our area, in our industry, uh, had a hard day. He found out he was, didn't find out, he's not, I'm sure. He publicly exposed himself as an alcoholic with depression who's struggling to make it through every single day. Yep. You know, and you want to make the cocktail of pulling my heartstrings? Alcoholism, depression, anxiety, sadness, Stir up that cocktail. Yep. You want the good news? He basically went on Facebook Live and exposed himself crying. God bless him, by the way. I hope he's doing okay. Mm -hmm. Crying and upset and emotional and just bearing his entire soul. We're talking about as raw as it possibly could get. And I didn't see it. I wasn't on at the time. But I did see it. Because I'd established myself over the last two years so well that eight different people, four of which I don't even talk to, reached out to me via text, Facebook Messenger, or otherwise to let me know someone was having this problem and that if I could reach out, that would be great. Yep. I had established myself enough in this journey and rock solidly enough with what I'm dedicated to to make the world know from people who know me well and who don't know me well know that I would have, of course, reached out to this gentleman immediately. I did reach out. Yep. He did not comment back. He probably got the support that he needed, and that's absolutely fine. The win here was taking 
that sort of generational trauma and coming to a point by 45 years old where I am looked at as somebody who can help and not hurt. Yeah. Win. Absolutely. Win. I sat in a room three and a half years ago, hung over. Um, and again, I've, I've gotten a lot better at telling the story because I've realized that the, the more that I'm honest with people, the more they can feel less alone. Yeah. Three and a half bottles of wine. I was here in this building, in my office, kicking butt, by the way, doing really well. I'd already closed. I think I'd been with a company for four and a half months at that point in time. I'd already closed like 15 million, you know, and as a transitional, that was great. Yeah. And I had invited a ghost writer to come in to write my story, which is back then I was trying to figure out a way to get it out or a way to feel better. And I knew that I needed to tell the story, but I knew I wasn't ready to tell the story, but I was kind of forcing it a little bit because everybody kept telling me I needed to. And she's sitting there and we're having a little bit of interview. And I remember looking across from her and I remember everybody knows what hangover feels like. I take hangover times 30. <laughs> and I was much more overweight at the time. And I just felt really run down. And I remember stopping it. I said, you have to go. And she was like, excuse me. I was like, I can't tell you the story when I'm drunk. Yeah. And I can't tell you the story when I'm still drunk. And she said, well, what are you going to do? I was like, I have to get undrunk. She's like, do you want to do it tomorrow? And I was like, no, not that kind of undrunk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I'll call you in a couple years. Yep. That was really hard, Jeff. Yeah. I wanted to tell my story. I want to tell my story now. Yep. As many people have I've seen it affect people, I had to sit in that chair and realize that I was the worst messenger of my own story that ever existed. And then even though I had things that could help people, I couldn't use them to help people because my choices made it so I couldn't do it. I wasn't able to use what I'm using now to help other people, to let them know that we're not alone, to let them know that they're not sad, to let them know that, you know what, some of us do have three bottle of wine nights. But I had to beat it in order to use it. Yeah. And that day that I sat in that, that chair, I had to learn that I had to beat it in order to use it. 897 days later, I'm sitting down in this format. Yeah. Not the way I imagined. Mind you, I would have thought it would be a book. But <laughs> in this format, and you know, I originally thought about this podcast with you, and I thought to myself, gosh, what if nobody watches it? And then I thought, I smiled, and I thought, 33 people out of 1,233 people see my posts and get something out of it. Absolutely. There's a clear definition that I feel like has gotten lost and I didn't realize over the last, up until the last three weeks that I've, I had a, I had a, a I had a medical scare in the last two weeks. Should yeah. be perfectly fine. I won't go into it, but I had a medical scare. It's like being an adult and you find something wrong. And, and I realized that maybe I had been misperceived or misread for a very long time just based off this one experience. So when I got home, there was some, there was some things that could have ended up as a result. I could have had a surgery. I could have had something taken out, all sorts of things, but there would have been side effects as in I could have had slurred speech for the rest of my life. And I could have had my left side of my face be paralyzed. Um, and I could have had a scar, like all these could have, could have, could have, could have, I, it's me. I'm a little obsessive. Have you figured that out? <laughs> and I went and read everything about it. So I realized I was being perceived differently than I wanted to be perceived when someone said, yeah, someone mentioned the vanity of me upset about the scar. It wasn't a bad thing. Yeah. But it made me step back and go, oh, oh no. I don't care about that. I don't want to walk around making my son embarrassed. And she was like, what? And I was like, I don't care about the scar. I don't, I don't mind. None of this comes from that part. But I think that's so clear, Jeff. I think people need to understand. I don't want my wife to have to take care of me. I don't care that I would be disabled. Yep. I don't want my son to be embarrassed by a scar across my head. Not that I would have a scar across my head. Yeah. Not that, you know, I don't, I don't mind having the bad things happen to me. In fact, I said this when I was younger. It's really weird that this has come full circle. I used to say to people, if anybody in my family got blank, fill in the problem, I would rather have it be me because I feel like I have the fortitude to beat most anything. Yep. I really do. I really do feel like I have the fortitude to beat most anything. But I realized that for years, maybe people had been thinking that my vanity was the reason why I didn't want the scar. I don't care about the scar. In fact, it's kind of cool. 
Yeah, I don't care about the. I don't know what it's called when the when when you lose the nerves in your face. But, yeah. but like, I don't care that my face would be looking like the way that it did when I looked in the mirror. I had zero. I, I'm telling you, I had zero cares. I do know what it's like for a young teenage boy to stand in a crowd with his dad, and I didn't want. And I know he wouldn't care. And this is the one thing that's going to get me emotional. I just didn't want my son to be embarrassed. Yeah. And you know what the best part about my son is? He wouldn't have been. Yeah. You know, so my overall reaction was, I don't want my wife to take care of me. My wife and I have this argument where I'm like, I don't want, if I ever get to a point of like hospice or anything like that, I don't want, my wife wants to take care of me, but I don't want her to have to take care of me. I don't want her to go from the guy that is her sexy man to the guy she has to change his diaper. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what marriage is though. You know, that you kind of maybe have to go through those things, but I don't want my wife to have to do that. So that's where I'm coming from with it. And I want to make, I've, I've waited for a platform, I guess, for a very long time to make people understand that it's not a matter of, I'll take it. Jeff, if someone walked over to you and said, we're going to give you this ridiculous scar across your face right now, and it's going to affect you for the rest of your life. I'd probably volunteer to take it for you. I don't want you to have to feel that pain, but I know I can carry it. Yeah. Because so far, I've carried it to date. Mm -hmm. There's this really great photo, and someday it'll be a tattoo. There's a really great photo, and it's, um, you know, the atlas holding the earth? Yeah. It's a, I, I can show it to you when I get off, you know, when we get done here. It's a, it's a sketch. It's a sketch of a man holding the weight of the world on his shoulders. And instead of the earth, it basically looks like a big boulder. But obviously, it's supposed to be Atlas holding the earth. Yep. I identify with that guy. I identify with that. And I, I am the basket that protects my mom and my dad, and my brothers, and my sons, and my wife. I want to be the net. I want to be the shield. I want to be the... Now, I want them to learn, and I know that people have to go through pain. I'm not yep. being ridiculous, but I want to be their Captain America. I want to be their Superman. I want to be their Spider-Man. I want them to know if you need something, you call And then, you know, at the same time, maybe I'll be making one of my sons that too. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't actually wear capes, but I think we're superhero superheroes. Mm -hmm. I think we can be superheroes for people. I think we can too. You just, Absolutely. Uh, um, yeah. When you do this with Michelle. Yeah. Oscar you're a Mike. superhero. I tell the story of you guys doing these runs like you just saved the planet from... <laughs> Yeah, the Green Goblin. Then I'm like, I, I slow him down. I'm like, no, you got to hear this part. <laughs> they don't actually run the race to finish the race. They run the race to finish the race to help someone else finish the race. Absolutely. There is no, no selfishness in it. Just selfness, selflessness. But they don't do it for the recognition. I'm the one recognizing them. You wouldn't even know unless Jeff told me the story of it, because he wouldn't have told me the part about the fact that it's completely selfless, and I want to recognize him for being selfless for doing it because it's so stinking cool. And you don't do it for that. You do it for him. And that's the same thing that I'm trying to say about learning these lessons or moving forward or having these things that we deal with on a daily basis, and you're doing it for people. Not everybody's built to be a buffer. Some of us, you know, for lack of a better term, it's like... A, I, I'm okay with being a lightning rod. I'll recover. Yep. I'll recover. This medical thing I was going through a couple of weeks ago, I had three, four days of absolute emotional, physical, everything terror in my mind of what could happen. And on day five, I woke up with peace. Yeah. And I was like, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do with this? I'm going to make this a lesson. I'm, if this is what they think it is, I'm going to use this to teach others how to get through this. Yep. And at the same time, I'm going to feel a lot better. I mean, you know, newsflash, when you help people, you feel good. Absolutely. I would, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. I would, I would venture to guess. 
I would stake money on it that there are hormones, endorphins, whatever it is that are released when you're helping other people. There has to be. Yeah, my grandmother used to say that everything tastes better when you share. <sighs> yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. It does. Yep. yep. It absolutely does.